and I'm actually going to uh, give you, uh, I'll, I'll give you a, short, a quick uh, overview of uh, Google Compute Engine. And so uh, the, the, this uh, map stuff, or um, Compute Engine, that's actually part of the uh, Google Cloud platform. That's the kind of the whole package. So I'm going to give you this uh, whole uh, overview of um, of what it is and, and what you can do with it and how how big you can scale. Um, so if you think about it, uh, uh, we've always been uh, building um, apps and services uh, to scale on you know a huge number of users. And think about Gmail, Google Drive, or Maps. Um, in fact, for the past 15 years, uh, we've been building the world's uh, largest and uh, most powerful infrastructure on the planet. Um, yeah, we have um, we led a consortium of um, companies to build uh, Unity Cable that are on, the, on the floor of the Pacific Ocean. Uh, so uh, we peer with uh, virtually all our ISPs worldwide. Uh, so this cable on the floor of the Pacific Ocean basically uh, gives us um, a, a few terabits of bandwidth uh, between uh, continents for us and our partners. Mm -hmm. And what this means for you is that um, using a uh, cloud platform, if say you want to transfer data across continent, it's blazingly, it blazing fast. Or it also opens um, quite a few interesting possibilities. Like for instance. Um, instant data replication across across the globe, so it's really fast. Um, I'm going to quote Wyatt here. So they said, uh, "This is what makes Google Google. Um, it's physical network. It's uh, thousands of fiber miles, and those many thousands of servers that in aggregate add up to the mother of all clouds." Um, and it is true because uh, uh, we are one of the largest hardware producers in the world. Uh, although you cannot actually buy a piece of hardware uh, in a store of Google's uh, infrastructure, that's because we are private um, uh, private producers of hardware. We um, both produce the hardware and, and consume our own hardware. Um, so you can think about uh, Google Cloud Platform as uh, a door to all those 15 years of our experience building this uh, infrastructure on a huge scale. And this door is now open to you or and uh, anyone else outside of Google. So essentially, we give you access to the infrastructure that powers our own apps and services that you know uh, a huge number of people use every day. Um, so hell yeah, we can we can power these if you if you need to. Yeah. Um, just yeah, uh, give you, just to give you some numbers. Um, so there are four. 0.75 million active applications running on uh, uh, cloud platform. Uh, 28 billion requests are being processed by App Engine every day. Just to have a baseline, um, for instance, Wikipedia, uh, the uh, the processing, uh, the handling 2.6 uh, billion requests per day. So, um, I mean, this is not just to say that uh, Wikipedia is, you know, uh, they kind of suck. Uh, it's, it's just, you know, to have uh, an idea about the volume of the uh, traffic that's been handled by uh, Cloud Platform. And our data store um, processes 6.3 trillion operations per month. So that's a huge number. Also, let me introduce you to some of our customers. Uh, many of you know Snapchat. Um, it's a photo sharing uh, service. So they deliver 400 million photos every day. Um, Songpop. Um, they scaled to over 80 million users, and they serve 18 terabytes of songs every day using Cloud Platform. Um, Infoworld, they did benchmark comparing uh, Google, um, Amazon, and Microsoft Public Cloud. So the result is that Google was the fastest and the cheapest um, overall. Um, Udacity is using uh, Cloud Platform to provide online courses. Uh, Eurovision, uh, one of the largest TV events uh, of the song contest. So they, they can handle 50,000 requests per second. And 90% of those requests are being served in less than 24 milliseconds. That's really a tiny number if you think about it. Um, oh, yeah. Uh, Pulse, uh, founded by two uh, Stanford students. Uh, so it, they were able to focus on the uh, fantastic app instead of managing infrastructure. Um, and then later they were acquired by uh, LinkedIn for $90 million. 
Uh, and finally, Mapper. Uh, they broke this, uh, the minutes of, uh, uh, record. They basically sort, sorted uh, 1.5 terabytes of data in, I think it was less than 60 seconds. And they, they, could, they could use uh, about 8,400 uh, CPU cores on computer engine. Um, so that was just to give you an idea about them, what we can do with uh, Cloud Platform. Um, if you like, uh, there are many pieces of the Cloud Platform. So to categorize, uh, you, you can you can you know uh, put them in into categories like uh, the infrastructure, where you can uh, so that's uh, a lower layer layer infrastructure as a service. This way you can run your virtual machines, uh, create private networks, and do things like this. And then going um, higher, you have um, uh, platform as a service. This is where you can focus 100% on, on your application and, and you know features and let the Google engineers manage this, the whole infrastructure layer for you. So I'm, I'm going to go in each of them, uh, them in uh, details, but uh, just to you know, uh, um, show you uh, small uh, components. So we've got compute, which I'm going to uh, uh, tell you about just in, about in a minute. Uh, we have different storages that you can use. Um, cloud storage also known as uh, object or um, blob store. This is typically compared to Amazon S3, if you, uh, if you use it. Um, Cloud SQL, uh, it's a relational database, and actually it's precisely MySQL, managed uh, MySQL uh, servers. So if you have an app or something that requires MySQL, you can, you can use Cloud SQL out of the box and it just works. Uh, also, Cloud Data Store. Um, this is a non-relational database. Uh, you can put in it like terabytes of terabytes of data. Uh, you can, I think, you can compare it to maybe MongoDB. So, non, not like no SQL database. We also have a bunch of uh, app services. So, for instance, BigQuery. You can use it to run uh, a SQL query on really terabytes of terabytes of data, and get the results literally in seconds. So that allows you to do all, all sort of analytics on your data. And I'll tell you about cloud endpoints um, uh, a bit later. So uh, we're going to start from this uh, lower level layer, uh, infrastructure as a service. Right? Uh, so we call it Compute Engine. So Compute Engine is all about virtual uh, machines, networks, and storage. And I'll, I'll just show I'll you a few of my favorite features. Uh, first of all, sub our building. So let's say if you run uh, on a virtual machine instance for 20 minutes, you'll get billed for exactly 20 minutes, not half an hour, not one hour, for just for 20 minutes, and that's all. Um, persistent disk cap is really high, it's 10 terabytes. And it is also uh, very fast, but most importantly, it is consistently fast. So uh, that uh, allows you to do um, calculations, let's say, how long it would take for you to uh, read or store uh, a chunk of data every time you do this. So it's very, you know, uh, has low uh, variance. So it stays like the, it's consistent, uh, the speed of reading and writing is consistent. And the same thing with network. Like when you, when you transfer, connect somewhere, transfer a lot of data, uh, the speed is consistent. It's fast and it is consistent. So that enables you to do uh, like to uh, look at the future and, and you know say uh, oh I'll need those kind of things because I know how fast the, uh, it it works and how, how fast data uh, going. Um, startup scripts is really a nice way to uh, set up your instances from scratch. Um, a load balancing it can handle one million requests per second, and that's on one IP address. And uh, not only that. Um, it can handle one million requests per second without pre-warming. That means if you, you know, suddenly hit it with one million requests, nothing will happen. Like all the traffic will go through, and so, uh, as it's supposed to. So no, no crashes, no, nothing at all. Oh, um, by the way, persistent disks can be shared actually across multiple servers. So that's also really a nice feature. And this also a lot of other cool stuff. So there's a short link. That outlines 10 other benefits. Uh, as, as an article comparing uh, Google with Amazon. So if you, I really, that's a really, a really interesting article if you if you want to read. Um, and another truly amazing feature is live migration. So you know uh, any infrastructure provider would uh, perform some maintenance task from time to time. So they would ask you, 
in, in one specific zone. So they would ask you to move your uh, you know, resources and assets to a different zone for this, the whole period of maintenance. Uh, that means for you uh, that you uh, probably have to launch new virtual machines in a different zone, then transfer your data, and then probably reconfigure your application, maybe change API addresses and things like this. So that's quite a bit of work, right? With, so our uh, computer engine um, does live migration while you servicing your users without any interruption. So basically, uh, when uh, there's a scheduled, scheduled maintenance event on a computer engine, uh, there's nothing that you have to do. You just you know keep on uh, keep your services running, and this uh, the, uh, your resources will be migrated live. And so, Rightscale did uh, live migration tests. So they uh, they were running uh, some application, and uh, they asked us to do the live migration while they were running these uh, things. So the result was that, so they then told us uh, later, if Google uh, hadn't told us that our instances had been migrated, we would have never known. So they basically, they saw no interruption in, in their service at all. While actually their resources were migrated from one zone to another one. So you don't have to do anything uh, when uh, that's maintenance uh, events. And, yeah, and we provide uh, a few um, yeah, Linux distributions out of the box, but you can also always build your own if you if you need to. Um, right, so that was um, all about infrastructure. Now we're going to go a bit higher, um, and and this is uh, so we're going to go to the platform as a service. This is where um, all the the slow layer infrastructure is managed for you. And uh, so you can you can focus 100% on your application or your, your service, and forget about managing infrastructure at all. And this is what we call App Engine. Um, so back in the days when I was using plain servers, um, I would typically start with um, installing operating system, um, uh, configure networking, uh, install uh, maybe a database. Uh, App configure application service, uh, front end service, uh, uh, servers, uh, load balancing, so all this stuff. And you know, just uh, when I thought it was over, actually it was uh, just about time to uh, you know perform some maintenance tasks, maybe update my operating system, apply security patches, and things like this. So I was spending a lot of uh, you know, time. Uh, to, man uh, to manage my infrastructure when I was actually wanted to build something, you know, uh, as a product. So, in with App Engine, you totally forget about all of this, and you just concentrate on on the application 100% of time. And not only that, you can also uh, forget about um, predicting traffic spikes or anticipating your users' growth. So. Uh, yeah, because uh, you know, App Engine has this auto scale uh, feature. Imagine you mentioned uh, at the TechCrunch event. So suddenly your app gets a lot of traffic. You know, everyone wants to go and see your, your product, right? So with App Engine, what do you do? You do absolutely nothing because App Engine will uh, automatically launch as many extra instances of your application as needed to handle all that traffic spike, to absorb all that traffic. Um, and then later, when the you know uh, traffic goes down. App Engine again will automatically shut down all those unused uh, instances so that you don't have to pay for extra resources that you don't actually use. And it's very easy to get started. Uh, this also free quarter, so you can you know play with it uh, with all of it as long as you want to. Um, and it's really really easy to manage. I mean, actually, there's no nothing to manage except for uh, performance sliders and upset things. So that's that's all you do. I mean, you don't manage. No infrastructure at all. It's, everything is already set up and provisioned and configured for you. Um, one last thing that I wanted to uh, tell you about is cloud endpoints. This is what enables you uh, to create your own uh, RESTful API um, on a, on a using App Engine backend, and then consume those APIs on, let's say, your um, uh, Android or mobile app, iOS app. Um, this is very powerful because the API infrastructure. Uh, that we give you access to, it is that same infrastructure that we use to power our own APIs, like Google Drive, any other APIs that you might have used. Um, just uh, a couple more uh, of customers. 
uh, if you didn't know, Ingress is actually using App Engine uh, as a backend to the mobile app to you know service all that you know huge amount of users that play the game worldwide every day. Um, uh, these guys, um, they had the, uh, uh, the largest YouTube um, live stream ever, and they built this uh, thing in two weeks, I think. And they, they handle 9,000 um, requests. Uh, they, the traffic peaks at 9,000 requests per second. Yeah. And it was built in three weeks because they, you know, they didn't manage infrastructure at all. They didn't hire any you know, engineers to, to do that kind of thing. So they focused 100% uh, on the application. And they, so it's th the time to market is really you know, fast. Um, so it's just to give you uh, another perspective on well uh, where those four pieces of uh, uh, cloud platform fit into one picture. Um, if you have you know uh, really custom specific uh, requirements for your application, you can use um, you can use on the you can be more flexible if you want to and manage your create your own piece of infrastructure and manage it manually if you if you want to. On the other hand, if you if you just want to focus on your application service and um, on its features, and you don't really need to manage the your infrastructure, you can use uh, App Engine, yeah, you know, and let Google engineers manage the local layer infrastructure manage for you. And but it doesn't also have to be you know one or the other. You can also mix and match. So use I don't know a piece of App Engine and then a piece of Computer Engine. And there's also uh, the two uh, layers at the middle that are left blank intentionally. That's because uh, Craig is going to uh, talk about it uh, later. And it's really cool stuff. So please stay. And uh, you'll see a lot more about this. Um, we really have great customers and partners. All of them integrate with Cloud Platform. So if you use uh, MongoLab, the, you, can, you, can run, you can run it on. Uh, uh, uses from from cloud platform. Um, yeah, so if you're interested, just go to cloud.google.com and to, to, you know you can learn uh, all of this stuff from that starting from that point. And you can also try it out uh, from that website, uh, or you can you know stop by and I'll be around for the whole duration of the event. So, thank you. to another founder.